Hi there. Welcome once again to the Academia series. We are continuing our topic on we are continuing our presentation on the topic on element compound and mixtures. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so I don't miss any posts from me. And let's get interactive also by using the email displayed on your screen. You can also comment under the comment section of my channel and your concerns will be addressed. Now, at the end of today's lesson, I expect learners to be able to draw the structure of the atom. Also, we'll take the electrical charges and other properties of the subatomic particles and then draw the structure of an atom of some selected element. Now, in the last presentation, I presented to you the periodic table. Let us quickly revise on the periodic table. And as I said, for the upper grades and then the JHS candidates, you are to be able to memorize the first 20, which should be at your fingertips, starting from hydrogen, getting to calcium, so that each of them does their chemical symbols displayed here, and then the atomic numbers shown at the top corners here, and then their mass numbers are down. You are not supposed to focus on the mass number, but just know that the atomic number and then the first 20 will be enough. Now let's start today's business by talking about the structure of the atom. Now the atom is made up of two main parts. We have the nucleus and then we have the outside el electrons. So nucleus and electrons. But when you go into the nucleus, we shall then have protons and neutrons also in the nucleus. So in a nutshell, the three particles that mix up the atom are protons, neutrons, which are in the nucleus, and then electrons, which are moving around it. Now, if we have this to be our nucleus, we have paths, orbit, or shell, which are drawn around the nucleus. So let's look at that. This one is called, the first one is called the K-shell. And then we have the second one, which is called the L-shell. Then, if there should be a third, M, fourth, N, in that order. So, and then on these shells, they are the paths along which electrons move around the nucleus. So, these are the electrons being displayed here. So, this is the general structure of an atom in the nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons, and we have the electrons which are revolving around it. This is a 3D or a simple representation of an atom, but in reality, how does the atom look like? How does the atom look like? So here we are. In reality, this is the structure of the atom, and that's how the electrons are moving around. Here, I will say this is the 3D representation. So we have each, we have the first shell, we have the first shell, second shell, and also we have the third shell, and each electron is moving around on its own path. Please, under normal circumstances, or in reality, you will see these circles around the nucleus. But then it just show you how the paths along with the electrons move around the nucleus. So let's quickly watch it once again. So we have this. Okay. So each one moving on its own path. They never cross each other. And that's how it is. I think my point is where well, let's continue. Then we have the properties of the subatomic particles. Let's quickly run through that. Proton has a mass of one charge of plus one and it is found in the nucleus. Neutrons has a mass of one, no charge, also found in the nucleus. Electrons have a mass of almost zero, one over 1840, which is almost zero. So we usually say zero. Charge of minus one, it is found around the nucleus. Now, let's look at these three properties or these three numbers which are used to describe the various particles in the atom. The first one is the atomic number, which can be represented by the letter Z. And it is the number of protons 
in the nucleus of an atom. So the total protons in the nucleus of an atom, call it the atomic number. Symbol is Z, capital Z. And it is equal to the number of electrons of that particular atom. So as soon as we are able to identify the atomic number, which is the number of protons, it is that number is equal to the number of electrons. So if you are to have an element, let's say X, why is the atomic number displayed? It is displayed at the subscript of the element. The subscript, as you can see here. Then let's talk about the next one, which is the neutron number. It is just the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. And it has a symbol N. Then quickly, the mass number is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. I have told you earlier that in the nucleus we have protons and we have neutrons. So the sum of these particles, the numbers put together, we shall call it mass number. It can also be called nucleons. The nucleon number or nucleon, the two together can also be called nucleon. On the chemical symbol, where is it displayed? It is displayed at the superscript of the chemical symbol. Now, the relationship between these three is that mass number equals, by definition, number of protons plus number of neutrons. So mass number A, number of protons, I've told you, is the same as atomic number. So we can say Z here and the number of neutrons. So this, this is the relationship that exists between the three. Now let us quickly look at this. As I've said, mass number here, atomic number here. Let's look at sodium. Sodium has a mass number of 23, has an atomic number of 11. This, uh, these numbers have been determined already. So 23, its mass number is 23. You can check from the periodic table. Its atomic number is 11. If that's the case, then wh how, what is the atomic number of sodium? We have 11. It means it has 11 electrons. Because I've told you the atomic number is the same as number of electrons. Then it shall have a mass number of 23 by visual inspection here. Mass number, atomic number, 11. Atomic number is the same as number of electrons. And done. But then what is the number of neutrons? Neutron number can be directly determined from the top here, as we know of mass number and atomic number. That one needs to be calculated. And that's where the relation A equals Z plus N comes in. So let's fill in our figures. So we have that. Making N the subject, I get N to be 12. Let us continue. Special case for chlorine. Chlorine also has atomic number of 35. Uh, mass number of 35, pardon me, and atomic number of 17. So proton 17. Electron 17, neutron number by using the relation 35 equals that, making n the subject, we get neutron to be 18. Sometimes you can be given the atomic number and given the number of neutrons as well, and you are asked to find the mass number A. Again, once again, use the relation, put in your various figures and calculate for your mass number. Right here we have 24. Now let's take a look at sodium. We are going to draw the atomic structure for sodium. As we have determined earlier, sodium has 11 protons, 11 protons, 11 electrons, 12 neutrons. So now if I'm to come here, let's quickly look at this. If I'm to come here, now I can say uh, I'm going to have for, I'm going to have for this, let me make it this way so that we all understand it better. So I can see, I can see that in the middle here we have 11 protons. So we put it here. Then we're going to have 12 neutrons, which is also put over here. Now we have to arrange 11 electrons on the shells. Be, bear in mind, the first shell takes two electrons. I hope you know this already. The first shell takes two electrons. We'll talk more about this later on. You can represent the electrons by cross or dot. It's accepted. Then the second shell, so 11, we have already arranged two. The second shell takes 
eight electrons as well. So we have eight, one, two, you can pair them, eight. One, two again. And then here you are. Minus five, six, and then seven, and then eight. So second takes eight, so eight plus two, making ten. It means if I take 10 from the electrons, I'm left with 1. So the 1 will come on the last shell. Just let me make this point clear. This first shell takes 2 electrons. The second takes 8 electrons. The third and the number of electrons take 18 electrons. But it has been realized that if it is able to take 8, it will behave as stable compound. So instead of arranging 18 here, we usually will arrange 8 as well. So now, if you take the sodium atom, we write that there's a term we call EC. EC is the arrangement of electrons on each cell of an atom. So if you look at it, the EC for this particular sodium is that the first shell has taken how many? Two electrons. You bring your comma. The second shell has taken how many? Eight electrons. And then the last shell has taken how many? One. So the EC for sodium is two, eight, one. First shell, second shell, third shell. All right. Let us take a look at chlorine as well. Chlorine has 35, 17. 35, 17. As mass number and then atomic number so by calculation it will have 17 protons 11 uh, 17 electrons as well and then by calculation 18 neutrons so now let's go in and fill in our numbers so that i can say 17 protons here then i have 18 Please, if you are to draw the atomic structure, you are to calculate this and put them here. Don't just fill in the electrons and leave here. For you to get the total max, show the number of protons. So go through, know your parameters here, calculate your protons, electrons, neutrons, and then fill in those which are supposed to be in the nucleus. Then now we are to arrange 17. So for the 17, the first shell, as I said, takes two. So one, two. And then one here and two. So I'm, I'm done with the first shell. Second shell is supposed to take eight. So one, two. You can do it singly. And after that, you pair. Three here. I have four here. I have five, six, seven. And then eight. As I said, the second shell takes eight electrons, so I can't put in any more again. So two plus ten plus eight gives me ten. If I subtract ten from seventeen, I'm left with seven. So let's go. That will come on the second shell. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then seven. I'm left with just seven. So we have so now let's quickly look at the EC. How electrons are arranged, particularly for chlorine. So EC this as the first shell took two electrons, second took how many? Eight electrons. Pardon me with my drawing, and then the last one took how many? Seven. So the EC for chlorine is two eight seven. We realize that EC for sodium is 281. All right. This brings us to the end of the lesson. But please remember, I am going to put a link under the comment section. There is going to be a Google form questions in the link in the comment section. Click on that link and answer questions on this particular topic. The system will mark it for you and give out your results. Expect me to come your way once again with the 
for me how to write compounds and name them.